adjustment here. Am I sideways? Let me know if I'm sideways. I'm gonna go check myself too. I am. <laughs> Give me a second, let me change my Christina, let me just change my camera view. Since I am sideways, clearly, <laughs> and then just extend this. I hope you guys are having a great um, Wednesday. It was storming over here a little bit, but it has gotten better. So thank goodness for that. Hey, hey. Just get this straight. Oh, I am taking it all the way up. having an awesome day and the sun is shining I mean it poured down and then the sun is shining and now we're good to go so I'm happy about that there we go one last tighten so the phone doesn't fall haha -ha! perfect perfection just a little short so I have to rise this up a bit and tilt there we go all right <laughs> we worked that out perfect okay guys so per usual if you don't know who I am my name is Melissa Jake CEO and founder of rescue event planning also known as Olivia Pope Alive Events. And we come here live every Wednesday and it's called Hashtag Melissa Wednesdays or Hashtag Ask Melissa Wednesdays. But we talk about different topics each time um, when it comes to event planning. And so let me just fix my, my lighting. It's a little too bright for me. So I am going to turn that down. That's so much better. There we go. Perfect. So um, we come here live every Wednesday to talk about um, different event planning um, topics. And today we're talking about um, how to choose the right venue for your next event. And we're going into the fall. So we're about to have a lot of conferences. We're about to have a lot of workshops, seminars, which is awesome but we need to make sure we have right venues as well so before we get into the minutia of things i'm doing my start my watch party and do your watch party as well minutia of things. and turn my volume down perfect so i have my watch party so you guys put your comments here if you're on my watch party put comments there too i can see both but we're gonna get into it um and then if you guys have questions, definitely do ask and um, I will answer as we're going along or closer to the end. Okay, so how to choose the right venue for your next event, right? And this is a big thing because once you walk into a space, you automatically start feeling the energy. And so that's big. Um, and your guests will automatically start feeling like, is this about to be good? or as I, am I not gonna have a good time, right? So think about when you go to a restaurant. If you go to a restaurant, it kind of smells, people, you see like rags all over the place, you're not sure what's going on, you kind of get a sense of like, I don't wanna eat here, 
right? So it's the same thing when it comes to a venue for your event. It is um, how do I want my guests to feel when I walk in? Do I want to feel glamorous? Do I want them to feel like, oh, we're going to really be educated today? Like that venue really makes a difference, right? So here's my seven, have my, yep, my seven ways of how to choose your, uh, a right event. Um, and so the first one is, um, who's your target audience, right? So picking your venue is not only about the venue it's about who the people that are going to be inside the venue for your event so i'm um, thinking about your target audience and what is your guest size okay so before you start creating a short list of uh, venue spaces you also need to know who will attend and how many people will attend so if your event is if your event is uh or event venue is too big and you're like, well, I really don't want it, but I really love the atmosphere. There's hotel um, partitioners, right? So don't always eliminate a venue because space might be way too big, especially if you're getting it for a good price, right? Um, that you could always utilize sectionals or dividers to then divide the room up and then you now have more room to do other type of things for your venue. Um, and a lot of things that are trending, like if you want to fill in space is, um, people do like yoga sessions during events like midday workouts, kind of like 15 minutes, let's get the blood flowing before we go back into content. So that is something that you can do with your extra space. Um, and those who are having like your weddings or your RSVP events where it's invite only and not ticketed, um, we all know that for some reason, we don't like to RSVP. <laughs> I don't know what it is. No matter what nationality you are, RSVPs are hard across the board. So you have your deadline for your RSVP, but just make sure you're following up with them, right? So that you're making sure you're filling in your seats to what you need. So that's number one, knowing what your target, who your target audience is, and um, what is your guest size, okay? Number two, how to cater um, to your target audience. So what does that mean? So am I going to have CEOs of um, HBCUs come to Panera for a meet and greet? No, I'm not. Right? So you need to target to your um, audience. Who is your audience? Are they tech people? You need to find a venue that is really big on tech. Um, are they CEOs? Are there nurses? Are they, um, um, you know, I don't know, people who grow plants, green thumbs. Is this a, three, th a green thumb convention? Whatever it is, uh, whoever it is, make sure you know your target audience and their demographics. That's big. You know, what is their income? Um, because their average income, you want to make sure you're speaking to that target audience. Some people are very used to five course meals, fine dining. They're used to a water butler. That is their norm. So if that is your audience who you're targeting to, make sure you're keeping up with their norm and not bringing them down to where they may not want to be, right? So make sure you know that and it reflects their needs. So that's number two, catering to your target audience. No matter what income, position, whatever it is, make sure it's speaking to your target audience. Um, what is convenient for your guests? So making sure you're picking something that is convenient to your guests. What does that mean? That means is it, a per, um, is it in an area where majority of your guests live? If you're doing something where, well, I'm reaching to everybody in the nation and they can fly in if they want to, that's fine. It's close to an airport. Um, do you have to travel too far into the city where you're like, this is just going to be way too much for somebody in an Uber coming from the airport or a hotel? Are there hotels nearby? So you're just thinking, what is convenient? You know, most people think of yourself. Do I want to travel deep into Waldorf, Maryland? Right? No, I don't. <laughs> and no offense to anybody who lives in Waldorf. It is like a part of Maryland that you only like three routes to get into and I'm not going to have a conference down in Waldorf, Maryland, unless my target audience is down there. If I have people from Baltimore, they're not going to come down to Waldorf. That's at least a two hour to three hour drive. So make sure you're in the convenience location for your target audience. Um, and that will then reflect on who's actually going to show up. 
You know, even though people might have bought tickets, that's great. You made your ticket sales, but you don't have warm bodies in seats. So butts in seats is what counts for me. Um, and then, you know, if you're going to have alcohol, make sure that it is nearby a hotel. So if people are drinking, they're not drinking and driving or it's Uber accessible, taxi accessible, all of that. Right. So that's number three. Number four is weather. And so though your event may not be outside, let's think of everything. Right. So if it's just like today, it's sort of pouring down rainy, um, think, know the weather. Are you going to have a hotel or a venue that allows umbrellas? Like, are you going to go to the dollar store or Target and have umbrellas for people in case they need to go out? Or does your hotel already have that? And some hotels do. They have loaner umbrellas. You check in and you check out, and that's a part of your package for your guests. So that is something that you can always inquire with the venue um, when you're doing that. Um, so having umbrellas available, um, if it's an outdoor event, of course, a tent and if it's going to rain sidewalls and making sure you're talking to the tent company. If it's hot, if it's going to be July, should I add AC to my tent or fans, even with the raining, will it be too, um, muggy inside or should we go with the AC, you know, if that's feasible, right? So just always making sure looking at the weather, it's not only rain, like how hot is it outside? to make sure you're, ma you're making your guests comfortable as much as possible, right? Number five, knowing uh, venue knowledge and experience. So what does that mean? Like how often has this venue done a conference, a summit, a workshop, a tele-summit that is gonna be in person but also recording live, right? Um, knowing your internet access because there are some hotels who are like, yeah, we give you 15 complimentary internet access, but it's slow. It's not, it's like for email checking, maybe some social media is not to stream. So what does that mean? You need to make sure that your venue allows streaming. If I want to stream, is that a separate package? Is that a separate fee? Um, can I, my own text come in and they have to have a, a hotspot or their own type of hub of internet access? You know, what does that look like for that venue? Um, and so knowing that their experience of being able to stream live, cause that's big. A lot of people are doing live events, but still having a streaming option. What is the speed of the internet? How slow, how fast is important. And is that going to be on its own, um, separate, um, internet access, or is it going to be shared with my, the rest of my 150 guests that's also going to be on social media streaming their personal stuff or just doing their own things right um, and that's important to know because streaming takes a lot of data so knowing that ahead of time is great um, not only for the streaming purposes but what about their wait staff like what is their experience with their wait staff ask these questions when you're going to the venues um, it's definitely better to be very knowledgeable in understanding what's going on for your venue and for your event then to kind of say like, well, I wasn't unaware. So making sure you know that, right? Um, let's see, uh, make sure you want to speak to some staff members. Um, you know, what's their expertise, how they accommodate, how friendly are they? So not only talking to the manager, of course, the manager is going to wow you as much as possible. They want the sell, right? They, that's where the sales department is about. Um, and if it maybe if it's a, um, um, a small venue space is only for like 75, 100 people. Still, well, the staff, the neighborhood, what neighborhood is in? Can you walk around outside if people want to take a stroll? What does that look like? Are, is it clean? Is it nice outside? So you want to check all of those things because that's an experience. The experience is not only in the room. The experience is in the bathroom. I tell this, tell my clients all the time, that's great. Can we check the bathroom? The, the, the hall is awesome. Let's check the bathroom. How clean is the bathroom when I was coming to a visit? That's a, that could be a concern that the bathroom wasn't clean. That's big for me. Um, and then if you're going to have rooms in the hotel at the, of the venue, if it's going to be at a hotel and you're, and you're having guests stay in rooms, I want to check a room. I'm not letting you know, I want to check a room. Hey, is there an empty room? We can see that where our guests, you know, could, um, are going to be staying check it out same thing for wedding reservations you know when you're booking blocking hotel rooms for your guests as well that's the same deal pop up and check a room because if they're not on point when i'm popping up 
are they going to be on point when guests are arriving? You know, so that's a concern that, every, you know, your guests are not taking up the whole hotel. So that's something that you need to make sure um, is good. So you want to check the bathrooms of where that's near to your event space. And if you're in a hotel, you want to check the hotel rooms. Don't let them know that you're checking it ahead of time. It's a pop-up visit. Okay. Kind of like an audit. It's your audit sheet. Okay. So you want to make sure you can see all this stuff before you start um, signing contracts because that may not be the right venue for you. Um, also ask them what is their procedures or help um, with setting up and break down. How much do they set up? Do they just put the tables and linens on and that's it? Are you responsible for pulling the linens at the end of the day? If you're not at a hotel and maybe you're at a venue space, what are their expectations? Do you have to sweep and mop at the end of the day and, and break down the tables? Knowing everything and all your responsibility is needed because if you're expecting that's going to already be done and it's not, then you need some help and you're in trouble the day of your event. Um, we talked about walking around, checking about possible noise issues, um, neighborhood, where it's located. Um, is there any possible hazardous stuff? Are they doing construction around the hotel? Okay. That's irritating because you're trying to make a right. You can't make a right because the road is closed. You got to go around and all of that stuff, right? So you want to check that out, you know, um, closer to your event. Ask them, are there any type of constructions that's going to be happening? I just met with the National Park Association for one of my clients that's having an event on the National Mall. And that was one of my questions because in D.C., they're always doing constructions. Hey, is there going to be any construction around um, the National Mall in this particular area because um, I think I just I, when I was down there there's another museum going up right so that's another construction so always ask these questions where you're like why are you asking that that can um, impact parking it can impact your guests getting there um, getting lost because you're so focused on the construction and not focus on trying to get to the venue right so ask all those type of questions um, so number six what other services um, does the venue provide? So some venues, um, like there's a, a cruise ship in DC called the Odyssey, they actually provide floral arrangements a part of their package. So that's, you know, really nice. Most venues don't do that, but ask, you know, what do they have? Some people have the small little tea lights on the table. Some people have vases with a floating candle. That's fine too. But just ask what type of centerpieces do they offer in my package, right? Parking, is it comped or not comp? Do I have to pay for it to be comp? Those are questions that you want to prepare your guests for your event. Um, security, uh, depending on the type and the size of the event, do I have to provide security? Or do is that included in my price? If I'm over 300 people, you need security, right? So um, knowing that information about that, because some places do require security, um, to be on site over a certain amount of people. Um, and depending on the type of event, if it's more for like political purposes, they may say you need security. Or if you're having somebody who is high official, you're inviting somebody with their own security, they may ask, you know, they want to do a detailed walkthrough before the event. Is that okay with the venue? Just making sure you understand and tell the venue your event and explain what's happening at your event. Because that can also give them an idea like, oh, in our policy, that means we recommend you hire an outside security company. Okay, so always don't try to limit the venue to they're just a venue. They don't need to know all my business. Tell them everything because you don't know what policies really are um, dealing with the venue when it comes to your event. Um, also for like for me, I definitely ask as an event planner. Um, your hotel staff, what uh, channel are they usually on to do their regular operating things like? So there's, um, um, they don't call them janitorial services anymore. Housekeeping. Housekeeping will have walkie-talkies. Um, and I think like GMs and regular people who are working in the hotel, they have walkie-talkies. And so ask them, what channel is your walkie-talkie um, on? Because my event planner or if you are the event planner, I usually use walkie talkies in large events. We don't want to interfere with the channels so that we can still have lots of communication for our team and your team as well, right? Um, so 
And then knowing, also testing your cell phone signal. If it's in the basement and you're really not getting good signal, do you want to have it there? That might be a breaker for you because people need their cell phone and they need a signal. <laughs> so um, those are things to test. Test that in the venue space. How well is the signal? Because if it's not strong, you know, it might be a question of, oh, there's a concrete slab above. That's why and whatever. And if you're okay with that, at least you know ahead of time, right? Um, any restrictions, ask them any restrictions that can not happen or can happen. Um, like for biggest thing, like for some venues, videographers are not allowed on the stage and, and moving around or disturbing or high flash. If it's like in a museum, um, of too bright of a flash can mess up the paintings on the wall. Ask those questions, any restrictions with us, what can we do, what can we not do? Of course, a lot of places say do not put things on the wall unless it's um, like a, a 3M, um, I can't remember the proper name of it right now, but your um, easy pull hook, not hooks, but what you put on the, on the wall. And it was made by 3M, but I can't remember the proper name of it. But ask them, can I put things on the wall? What can I use? Double slide tape, not all that stuff. Um, and then any additional services, you might have um, <laughs> lighting and staging, um, audio visual, uh, ticketing, do they have tickets, transportation, some hotels already have contracts with transportations and transportation companies, um, that is something, or, or site or sea tour, maybe you want to throw in a little site and sea tour of that city, do they have a partnership already that you can talk to? Um, and so just ask those questions because that might be a great way to break up the time. Um, and you're like, yeah, that's awesome. I didn't even think about that, right? Um, and then seven, like what are venue fees? And this is where people get uh, tripped up a lot and don't realize that there are a lot of fees. I like to call them the hidden fees. But there are fees. I understand some of them. I don't, but that's the nature of the game when it comes to venues. Um... So venue fees, taxes are included. So most times they'll say, oh, it's $20 per person. Great. And you're like, oh, I'm doing my calculations. Um, $20 per person. Um, I'm good, right? 20, let's, let's do a number. I pull up my calculator. I like to do real numbers. So if I had 100 people and it's $20 per person, so I'm at 2,000. Oh, okay, you know, that's in budget. Maybe my budget was three, right? 2,000 per person, great. Yeah, but then there's taxes. Oh, okay, there's taxes. And then there's a 22% gratuity fee. Huh? Yeah, gratuity, 22%. What? Yeah, absolutely. So you're thinking, okay, it's 2,000 taxes. Mm, depending on the state, maybe, you know, let's say 2,100. Don't see taxes being a thousand dollars, but twenty one hundred, you know, just to kind of over shoot it a bit. Um, but no, there's twenty two percent gratuity fee, whether I serve water, tea, or real food, twenty two percent. Um, so know and ask what are all my fees, ask them that so that you're not surprised. Like, what? Um, <laughs> is this fee and that fee and that fee? Um, some people have cleaning fee of the room, make sure you know what that is. Um, does that include chairs, linens, everything, liability coverage? This is the big thing. Corking fee. A lot of places do charge it. Cake cutting fee too. They charge for that. They cut the cake. It's like 25 cents per person. Um, some people even have a dollar per person. So, you know, if you had a hundred people, it's a hundred dollars just to cut a cake. I can cut it myself, no worries, and pass it out myself, right? But it just depends on the type of event that you're having. I totally get it. Um, but the event planner in me is like, we're cutting this ourselves. <laughs> um, and making sure if you um, are having some type of alcohol, and even if you're not, and you're having a, um, uh, um, was it Martinelli's, or there's another thing at Trader Joe's where alcohol is removed from the drink, um, but it tastes really nice. Even that is a corking fee if they have to serve it themselves. Um, if they, if the servers are going to pour it out. It's called a corking fee. 
So know that that's another fee that you didn't think of, right? But you want to add a nice little touch to your event. Um, ask them about, of course, between buffet and plated, that's kind of, the cost is always per person, but of course that will fluctuate. Um, and even if it's buffet or plated, it's still a 22% gratuity charge. Look, just take that out of there. Just in, embrace the 22%. That is it. I hope it doesn't get any larger, but that, that is what it is. Um, bartending fees. Is there any bartending fee? Um, and then sometimes you guys, there are something called, um, a buyout. So if I don't use their AV, um, equipment or their AV team, then I have to pay a fee to buy out and use my other AV team. <laughs> I know that may sound crazy. So I'm here at your hotel, the Jake's hotel. The Jake's hotel says if you use an outside company AV team, that fee is a thousand dollars to use your own. But you can use mine, but my AV team may be like 4,000 where your AV team is only 1,500. So you have to then pay the hotel $1,000 to allow this AV team to come in and still pay them the 1,500. So in a sense you're paying um, 2,500. So some places do do that. They do that. Um, that one is where I really don't agree with a lot, but that is the nature of the game. Um, especially in hotels, they're, they have the prerogative to do that. Um, and then know what the payment schedule is and cancellation fees. God forbid if you do have to cancel, um, do know that. Um, and so you just want to be very clear and it's not being rude or like being know-it-all, right? I make sure when I'm with my clients, I am asking all the questions if I feel like something is being hidden in cost. Um, and understanding all of their rules and their policies. How early can you set up for the event? That's another thing. A lot of hotels only allow you an hour and a half. You only got 90 minutes to set up. And if it's a big setup, come on, we got to negotiate something. And then especially if you're dropping a lot of money down, okay? If you're dropping like over 10,000, so you can negotiate. Don't feel like you can't negotiate. You can negotiate on price. Or if it's not on price, it is, can we get more time in this? Can we get this? Can we get that to supplement, right? Um, and it's also about building relationships. So yes, come in, ask your questions, be, you know, get your game on, that's fine. But also if you're wanting to build a relationship with this person or this company, this venue again, then, you know, make sure you're still having your political face on because you're, you want to still build business or if they're giving you a great price, and you know, oh, next year we're definitely having it here, then of course, you know, you wanna make sure it's fair for you in price, but it's also building a great relationship with them as well, okay? So I hope this was helpful for you guys on how to choose um, the right venue for you, um, depending on the different type of uh, venue that you have um, or different type of event that you're having. I hope that this gave you some knowledge now, while you are going out and looking for venues, whether you're doing a wedding, a baby shower, a conference, a summit, a book launch, whatever type of event that you have, these steps will help you eliminate venues to then get the right one for you. And um, be an advocate for yourself and um, really read up and be knowledgeable about certain things. And if you're not Guess what? I have the perfect person for you and I'll give you her contact information or you can just send me a message because I'm she. So <laughs> you can always send us a message and we can help you guide through the process of um, securing a venue um, if that is a need for you um, because it is it does get a lot of it gets hectic sometimes um, dealing with vendors and understanding the the jargon in the language, um, it does get a little bit difficult, right? So thank you guys so much for joining me tonight on this Wednesday. Um, hashtag X Melissa Wednesday. Um, hey, Ida. Hey, girl. 
um, Angela, Lashana, thank you so much for joining you guys. I hope you guys are sharing this information out. I hope it was knowledgeable for you. Give hearts, likes. I'm just going through to make sure I didn't miss anybody's um, questions. And if I did, charge it to the heart, not the mind, or the mind, not the heart. I totally forgot the saying. Um, but um, definitely send us a message if we didn't answer it in the chat tonight, okay? I hope you guys have a great evening. Um, have a pr prosperous week, the rest of the week and the weekend. And we will see you next Wednesday. Next Wednesday is going to be totally different. Um, yeah, it'll be totally different, but not different. And so, um, but you'll see the announcements happening like tomorrow. <laughs> so you guys have a great evening. Talk, see you guys later. Um, and have a great night. Bye.